hey you guys good morning welcome back to another video welcome to another vlog and so today is thursday it's thursday morning y'all and i am up early it's like 6 30 almost seven o'clock and what woke me up was i was stretching in my sleep and i don't know if i told you guys but every now and then my feet cramp so i guess the shoes that i had been wearing doesn't offer much support so while i was asleep i was stretching my legs and my um foot and my calf muscle locked up and on one leg and then my foot um was at the beginning stages of cramping on the other leg so girl can we say that was extremely uncomfortable and it's still kind of sore so i don't know what's happening with that i think it's just i just need to get me some more um supportive tennis shoes the ones that i've been wearing lately um doesn't offer much support but um anyway so last night while it's fresh on my mind last night there was a um like a virtual get together i don't want to call it a meeting per se it was more like a get to know me type of thing and i'll answer a few questions so last night there was a um well i guess i could call it a meeting y'all i don't really know what else to call it but all of the service partners slash ibos were able to meet the new arise ceo so it was about a 30 minute um meeting or whatever they didn't really t talk about too much because it was only 30 minutes so um, in the beginning, of course, there was an introduction to the CEO. Um, his name is Miho or Mahi, something like that. I can't remember y'all, but um, he introduced himself and pretty much gave a little bit about his background. Um, there were three other people on the panel. They were part of management as well. So um, as a whole, the topics that they basically discussed after the introduction was the portal outages. Apparently, what we all have been experiencing, not being able to log into the portal um, from time to time in the last few months or so. So there was a young man on the panel with the owner, uh, with the CEO. Oh, there was two men and two women. So the other male that was up there um, I forget what his position was, but he was giving a little bit of insight about the technical issues and stuff. So he was just saying that the portal issue, as far as being um, outages, there was something about a misconfiguration. So anyway, he, he said that they were able to fix it and that um, there should be no more issues with being able to log into the portal portal the other thing that they briefly talked about was like waivers so that's something else that they're going to be implementing i think in the past if um there was a reason that you couldn't service you could do like a self-service uh ticket and i think you got one waiver but i think now they're doing like two a month or something like that so you know if you're if you miss a shift due to a family emergency or for whatever reason, you're able to go in and um, submit a ticket for a waiver um, through the self-service portal. You don't have to go to Ava's from what I'm understanding. So those were two brief topics that they talk about. The main topic that I think everybody was curious about was the lack of opportunities on the portal. So I mentioned this before in a previous video that when you go to the portal, there aren't uh, many opportunities there's some days where there there are no opportunities so the owner kind of went kind of talked about it a little bit there was a female she kind of talked about it a little bit and I had also been seeing some chatter in regards to this issue amongst you know different groups on Facebook and from other agents and other IBOs and so it is from what I understand um, they are working really hard to get new clients to come to the portal. They are working to keep the ones that they have already um, on the portal. 
um, as far as the different clients that are utilizing Arise's services for outsourcing and that the main issue has been low performance, which um, as a result, some of the clients have scaled back the amount of hours that they are allotting for agents to um, grab and work or schedule, right? So, and I had been seeing this for a while. Um, like I said, there's been like a lot of chatter. And then my, my then my, um, with my own personal experience of being a virtual call center owner, I have seen these things as well. So, um, guys, it, it looks as if that they really just want better performance on the platform. Um, there has been some chatter as far as if they're going to be closing down here in the U.S. because they just added on Jamaica and India. Um, the CEO said that that's not going to happen. Um, that they're working really hard to bring in new clients and things like that. It's just a matter of providing quality customer service. And so that's been an issue on the, on the platform lately. And I do get that from a business point of view, because you don't want to, if the job is customer service, right? You don't want to have, um, people providing bad customer service. So what's happening is, um, <clears throat> there's been a mention of certification classes. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, I'm not going to say a lot, but there's people that are coming to the platform, they're registering, um, then they're enrolling into a certification course, but they're not showing up for class, which is why they implemented that no-show policy to eliminate the amount of people that are not showing up for class because what happens is it's a missed opportunity for someone else who may be interested in the class um, because there's only like 15 to 20 slots per class, right? Um, and they fill up pretty quick. So they're trying to eliminate um, missed opportunities and uh, classes where there's not a lot of people in there, right? Um, so that's one issue. And then meeting the metrics have been a, another issue. So, you know, there with every client that you service, first of all, let me just say this. Even though we're at home and we're providing customer service, we're taking calls, it is still a job. It's the exact same scenario as if you were leaving your house, going to a building and working in a, uh, a call center environment. It's the same exact thing. There's rules that you have to follow. There's processes that you have to do based on the client that you're servicing. There's a performance levels that you have to meet and if you're not meeting them then you know it looks bad on the client um that is providing that opportunity for us so in a nutshell it just sounds like um it just sounds like maybe us as ibos need to bring in more quality um client more quality candidates for servicing these calls because there is you guys there is a lot of like unprofessionalism excessive background noise um low qa evaluation scores like i see it all y'all um schedule people are scheduling themselves to work and then not showing up um i mean it's just a whole list of reasons and it's all agent issued so um it just like i said it's just a matter of finding quality candidates to perform the job because a lot of people that are coming to the platform are not performing that well um so there's that's been what the issue is you guys so if you're you're not seeing a lot of clients available you're already working a client and you're noticing that there aren't many hours available that is that is why it's a it, you know it's the c contribution of lack of performance and lack of showing up for scheduled intervals which is so bizarre to me because unless there was like an emergency I, I don't understand why anyone would schedule themselves because we are in control of that we can schedule we can create our own schedule but why why not show up you know that's so weird but i do understand it so the future of arise 
from my understanding, they're not going anywhere. Now, a lot of agents are obviously not happy with the fact that there are no opportunities. But again, you guys, it is because of low performance of agents is why there aren't many opportunities showing. So once the the um the professionalism and you know everything as far as the agent is up to par then we'll start to see more opportunities All right, y'all, so right now I am working on my thumbnail. I was supposed to post a video last night, but it took too long to upload, so I'm going to go ahead and post it as soon as I'm done with my thumbnail. So I use Canva. I use Canva for just about everything. I use Canva for all my thumbnails, for documents for my business, um, advertisements for social media, things like that. So... Um, if you're looking for a free tool to use to design email headers, resumes, all types of stuff, y'all, I would suggest Canva. Um, they do have a paid version where you can use the premium features. And also remember, you guys, if you are a nonprofit, then you can actually register your account and use the premium features for free. So um, just to FYI with that. So basically, I am choosing the template that I want to use. So I just go over here and go through all the templates and I just choose one. So I chose, which one did I choose? Uh, is it not showing because I'm currently using it? Anyways, it's not showing over here anymore, but this is what I'm using where it has instead of the four squares, it has six squares. So what I did was I went over to my video and I just take snapshots of different frames in the video and then I just kind of look through them. I upload them to Canva. So here's all my uploads. So I upload all of the clips or the snapshots that look, you know, don't look too bad, you know, not fuzzy, stuff like that. I look for certain things when I do the snapshots to decide which ones I'm going to use for the actual thumbnail. So anyways, so now that I've got all my pictures in, now I'm going to go over here to the text because I've been playing around with the text lately trying to see, you know, what I like and everything. So I've been using, uh, where is it at, the Railway Heavy. And this is not actually a Sunday morning routine, so I'm going to take that off and type in a few days in my life because this is literally a vlog where it's like three days. Oh, one all caps. A few. Oh, I can't type. I've got the camera sitting here right in front of the keyboard. Oh, my life. Of my lie uh no we're gonna do that again life okay and then i'm just going to stretch that out I'm going to make it a little bit bigger but not too big and then right here uh let's see i don't know if i'm gonna put anything so hmm let's see let's do Uh, shop with me, Kroger. Uh, you know what? We'll just, this time, we'll just leave that part off. I might come back and change it. But anyway, for the sake of the video, we'll just leave that off so that I'm not sitting here brainstorming on what to put forever in a day, okay? So now, I want to stay with the color of my channel which is purple it's my favorite color so I just go here and I click effects and then I click on the option where it's outline so click on that 
and then you can change the color of the outline. So right now it's gray. I'm gonna change it to this deep purple here, but I wanna thicken it a bit so that it stands out. So I'm just gonna make the line a little bit thicker. And shabam. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And you can stop here if you want. This right here, I'm gonna take that off because that is a uh, paid feature. So some of these templates have like little decorations on them and stuff like that. If you're not using the paid feature, uh, let's see, I don't know if you guys can see it real good, but like little stuff like that, like borders and little stars and stuff. Um, those are the paid items. So remember to remove those if you're using the free version. When you go to download it, the template or the thumbnail, it will tell you that you have a paid feature on your thumbnail somewhere and if you want to continue then you have to pay for it if not you just figure out what it is and then go ahead and remove it and so for right now i think i'm gonna leave it like that container of ricotta cheese the small one I think it's like 16 ounces or it might be eight ounces one of those and added uh, seasonings to that so garlic powder onion powder um, minced garlic Italian seasoning I think I added a little bit of smoked paprika I'm not sure but yeah y'all so it's gonna be good I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer so that that top can be a little bit more melted. 